Hi everyone, welcome back to the Brem Method YouTube channel. This video is on apoptosis on the MCAT and how you can read a passage that may at first glance seem really complicated and make it simple and easy to answer questions. Okay, so let's get started. All right, so let's say that there's a line in the passage that says, caspase 8 is a protease that triggers apoptotic cell death. Now, there's a couple things to unpack here. One, protease, which means an enzyme that's breaking apart a protein, and apoptotic cell death. Now, death almost always sounds bad, right? We don't want death, but it really depends on what passage this sentence is in. For example, if the passage was about cancer, well, cancer is just uncontrolled cell growth, right? So in that case, apoptosis would be good. We would want to kill off those cancer cells. Or it could be a bad thing, right? If you have healthy cells that are just doing their thing, uh, such as neurons, right? Healthy neurons, and this passage is about a disease that triggers apoptosis in healthy cells, right, then apoptosis is bad. So that's the first step that you want to take whenever you hit a passage where the concept could either be the goal or the thing that we're trying to treat against, right, is establishing what's good, what's the outcome we want versus what's bad. So let's say that this passage is about cancer. That means that apoptosis is good. And since caspase triggers apoptosis, caspase 8 functioning, I'm just going to modify to C8 functioning, is a good thing. It's what we're looking for to treat this cancer. So anything that's going to increase the function of C8 is what we're looking for. It's good. And anything that would decrease the function of caspase 8 or inhibit it would be bad. Right? So that's how we set it up. And then we can go ahead and look at graphs and figures and see what those graphs and figures tell us about this new protein's function. They can show you a couple of different types of graphs. So here's one. We have time on the x-axis and rate of survival on the y-axis. So if we're looking for treating cancer, right, we don't want a lot of survival, right? We want that rate of survival to go down. So for this graph, without even any data on it, we can tell you that for a cancer passage, we would want decreased rate of survival equals good right? That's how we want to write that. Decreased rate of survival is good, and anything high up here, right, would be bad or not showing good effective treatment. So let me show you some data. All right, so we've got this black line, which I want to represent as our control, right? There should almost always be a control in data, and the first thing you want to do when you're looking at data is identify it. So we have the control, which is just 100% survival consistent, which makes sense, right? Because cancer cells do like to survive unless they're treated. So now we have this pink line, which we'll call treatment one, and we have this green line, which we'll call treatment two. Which treatment is more effective at treating cancer? Yeah, treatment two. And which one do you think would be likely to be correlated with increased caspase 8 activity? Yep, also treatment two. Just off of this, right? Of course, there's probably other factors involved beyond just caspase 8, but we can say based on the information we have, we can infer that if high caspase 8 activity is good for apoptosis and bad for survival, right, then our treatment 2, which shows decreased survival, will also be an increased caspase 8 activity, right? So we can work on those relationships. Now, what kind of relationship do we have between caspase 8 activity and rate of survival? Inverse, right? Yeah, inverse. So if we increase caspase 8 activity, we'll decrease rate of survival. That's an inverse relationship. Direct would be with the arrows being in the same direction, either up or down. Okay, so so far so good, right? We're, we're cooking along. So now I want to show you a 
different way they could show this data. Same kind of setup, but this time the y-axis says rate of apoptosis. And again, if we're thinking about cancer, do we want a lot of apoptosis or a little apoptosis? Yeah, we want a lot, right? So this is actually the opposite graph and figure, right? Where we're gonna want a good treatment's gonna be way up here, right? And a less effective treatment's gonna be down here. So we can predict, again, without even seeing data, we can predict that the best treatment is gonna be the one that's highest up on the graph, and we can predict that our control is gonna stay pretty low. So sure enough, here are our figures. It's actually showing the same trends as our rate of survival graph, right? It's just an opposite relationship. So here, our, our rate of apoptosis, apop, right? Increased apoptosis equals increased death, right? Which is good because that's killing cancer. And it's also correlated with increased C8 activity. So this is a direct relationship, but it's describing the same end goal, which is killing off cancer cells. Now, just a note, if this passage was about healthy cells, right, healthy cells, and we wanted to keep them alive, right, so apoptosis is bad, right, then the opposite treatment would be better. Our pink line, our treatment one, would actually be getting closer to the control in both cases, and that would be what we were looking for, right? In this case, right, the graph would probably be showing this high rate of apoptosis as the disease state or low rate of survival, right? And then that treatment would be bringing that patient closer to normal, closer to the control. So it'd be the opposite relationship that we'd be looking for as our outcome. All right, I hope that video was helpful in clearing up how apoptosis, even though it's a fairly simple concept, right, programmed cell death, it can be tested in a variety of therapeutic and clinical ways on the MCAT. And it's important to make sure that you get the lay of the land and establish is apoptosis what we want to happen, cancer, or what we don't want to happen, healthy. And from there, using the information in the passage to help you get the correct answer. Thanks so much for joining me in this video. For more practice like this one, check out the rest of the videos in the Bio Biochemistry playlist, and I'll see you next time.